Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. A triumphant holy day. Hallelujah. Would it must To be less unworthy to offer this Eucharistic sacrifice, let us now bow down our heads, recall our sins, and pray for God's power. I confess to the Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words. In what I have done and what I have failed to do, to my faults, to my faults, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. 
Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. And on earth, peace to people of the world. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God of Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we praise you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth, and how he began in Galilee. After John had been preaching baptism, God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power. And because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. Now I and those with me can witness to everything he did throughout the countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem itself, and also to the fact that they killed him by hanging him on a tree. Yet Three days afterwards, God raised him to life and allowed him to be seen, not by the whole people, but only by certain witnesses God had chosen beforehand. Now we are those witnesses. We have eaten and drunk with him after his resurrection from the dead. And he has ordered us to proclaim this to his people and to tell them that God has appointed him to judge everyone, alive or dead. It is to him that all the prophets bear this witness, that all who believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank 
This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice, let us be glad. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice in salvation. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice, let us be glad. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice in salvation. Give thanks to the Lord for his good. For his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, His love has no end. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice, let us be glad. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice in salvation. right hand has triumphed. His right hand raised me up. I shall not die. I shall live and recount his deeds. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice. Let us be glad. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice in salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice. Let us be glad. This day was made by the Lord. Let us rejoice in salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven, where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are on earth, because you have died and now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed, and He is your life, you too will be revealed in all your glory with Him. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Praise the praise the past of Christ the Lord has set the shield, Christ the just one pays the price, reconciling sinners to the Father. Death and I fought bitterly, for this one brought victory, the Lord of life who died. Praise the Lord with pride. O Mary, come and say what you saw that break of day. The empty tomb of my living Lord. I saw Christ Jesus risen and adored. Bright angels testify. Shroud and grave cloths side by side. Yes, Christ, my Lord, rose gloriously. 
He goes before you into Galilee. Share with you see joyfully his death, his victory. Lord Jesus, victor king, show us mercy. As hope. In fact, a story is told 
of a Pentecostal church. And because Easter is so important, you know, on Easter Sunday, unlike Catholics where the priests always preach, they have to invite people to come and preach. So they decided that they were going to look for a powerful preacher to come and preach. They sent a letter to the preacher that they identified. And the preacher said, I'm busy now, I've already been invited, so I cannot come. He said, no. Then they met again, and then they, they, they talked about who can we invite. They said, let us invite someone who is very smart and eloquent. And they talked about somebody, they sent a letter to the person, and the person wrote back and said, I'm sorry, I've already been good. I cannot make it. Then they met again, and they said, who else can, I, can we invite? So, if you can get someone who is powerful, someone who is smart, let us look for someone who is good looking. <laughs> so, they looked for someone who was very good looking, they invited that person, and the person said, I'm sorry, I cannot make it. And then as this little girl was sitting down, and told the mother, oh mom, so we are going to be stuck with our own preacher today. <laughs> so, my friends, you are stuck with me today. You are not going to get a powerful preacher, you are not going to get a, a smart preacher, you are not going to get a good looking preacher. You have got a pious today. <laughs> the gospel reading today, the beginning of the gospel today, we hear Mary setting off in the dark to go to the tomb of Jesus. And this darkness, we can trace it back to the crucifixion of Christ. The gospel tells us that when Christ died, there was a total darkness all over the world. Perhaps Mary, this physical darkness was not the only darkness that he experienced at the crucifixion of Christ. He she experienced physical darkness in her life. She experienced emotional darkness. She experienced spiritual darkness. Why? Because Jesus, who cast out demons from her, who raised up his brother, her brother, from the dead, is no longer there. Her hope in Christ is dashed. No hope again. Christ is dead. He is buried. A stone has been put at the door of his tomb. No hope again for Mary. So Mary set out in darkness to go and meet the Lord in the tomb for the last time. And when she went, she realized that Christ is no longer there. Her darkness deepened. The body of Christ is not even there. The stone has been rolled away. If today gospel reading we have gone a little bit further to read the whole thing, we hear that she started crying. She started complaining, going to people and saying, Where have they taken my Lord to tell me and I will go for, to, 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 to him? And then Jesus appeared to her, and Mary could not recognize Jesus. Her understanding was dark. Then she said, Are you the gardener? And Jesus called her, Mary. And then Mary realized it was Christ. I could imagine the joy at that time. Light has now been lit in her darkness. Light has conquered her darkness. This is the hope that the resurrection of Christ brings to us. The resurrection of Christ brings hope. The hope that one day the tomb, all the tombs will be empty. 
the hope that one day truth will overcome lies. The hope that one day the light will always conquer darkness. That we are victorious people. Death cannot hold us captive. It gives us the hope that death will never have the last word. And indeed, this is what the Christians all over the world, those who have gone before us, they believe. And it's not just a legend. It is not just a myth. It is not just a story that somebody is telling us for us to just feel good about it. It is reality. It is something that happened. And in the first reading, Peter was recounting it. Peter went to Great Colonial's house and he was saying, you might have heard the happenings, you know, of what happened to the man who lived, you know, in Galilee. When he was baptized, the Holy Spirit came upon him. And he did good work. He set people free. He delivered people from their bondage. And yet with all this, they, they crucified him. They killed him. But the good news is that he did not remain in the tomb. He's risen. And he showed himself to many people. We are witnesses to that. We are one of those. We are people who saw him. We did not just see him. We dined with him. We experienced with him. We sat with him. We talked to him. We have encountered the risen Lord. He is alive. He is with us. He has given us victory over everything, over sin and death. And my friends, this good news is relevant for us in our situation that we live in right now in our world. The coronavirus pandemic looks up, see, it has brought darkness over the whole world. And many of us, like Mary, we might have lost hope. Like Mary, we have darkness over our thinking. We are saying there is no hope again. But the resurrection story tells us that light will always conquer the darkness. And indeed, whatever the coronavirus has done and is doing, we believe that just like Jesus overcame, overcame death, he will surely overcome this darkness that is hovering over the whole world in our time right now. Because God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can ever think or imagine. So, at this time I invite you in your homes, rejoice and let us put our faith in Christ, the resurrected Christ, that one day we shall be with him and reign with him in heaven. One day all our tombs will be empty because Christ has already conquered sin and death for us. And so we rejoice and say hallelujah. We are resurrected people and hallelujah is always our soul. My dear friends and Christ, today being a very unique celebration in place of decree, we normally decide on Sunday, we do the renewal of our baptismal promises. So I invite you in your respective houses. My bring a candle, just light it down and then, so that together we will do the renewal of our baptismal promises.
Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we want to renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and I do. And all his works? I do. I do. And all his empty shoes? I do. I do. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. I do. Do you renounce the law of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son and Lord? Who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I thank you. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I thank you. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, fear with pastor job. Let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved son may now be pleased to look upon us in our newness. For the shepherds of our souls, that they may have the strength to govern wisely the flock entrusted to them by the good shepherd. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O that it may truly know the peace given by Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For brothers and sisters who suffer, that their sorrow may be turned to gladness, which no one can take from them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own community, that it may bear witness with great confidence to the resurrection of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now also remember those who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, especially our parishioners who died recently and who will be buried over the next few weeks, especially Gerard Simmons, Paul Walsh, Ramon Claire, Patrick O'Sullivan, John Dunbar Barton, that the Lord may be pleased to receive them in his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. O oh God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you and receive the prayers of those who believe in you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, uh, 
Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we pray ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we are only in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, of whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your program, Church on Earth, with your servants, Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the author of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. Be with compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at the passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, everything I begin, through the God Almighty Father. command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
of our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory rise us now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, only by reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. I will see you. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be O sacrament, Oh, sacrament, 
Christ the Passover has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the feast with the living bread of purity and truth. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness, make those you have nourished by this Paschal sacrament one in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We sit down for a moment. If you're standing up, you can sit down now. <laughs> I wanted to take this chance just to say a very, very, very happy Easter to you. It's been a joy to celebrate Mass this morning. I hope it's been a joy to celebrate Mass um, alongside us and with us today. This is the fourth Sunday, which we haven't been able to be with each other, um, and it continues to be such a strange time. I've really missed being with you. I've really missed it, and I think we all feel the same. When I was looking through a list of those people who subscribed to our um, e-newsletter, I was becoming, becoming quite emotional, really, looking at the names of people and looking at the names of each other um, that we haven't seen and that sharing each other's news. I've got news to tell you here, okay. Father Pius has found um, that he actually is a powerful preacher, he's actually um, a, a good preacher, and he's, he's got a bit more good looking <laughs> while he has been gone. Yeah, Bob Stanley, okay, is getting warmer. He's getting warmer. He's spent all the time since he's been here in his huge, big jacket. And it's getting warmer. He's not sure, but it seems to be getting a lot warmer. Father Brendan, have you seen how long his hair has got? He should not be able to cut it. I offered, but there was no, there was no taking it at all. Not yet. Not yet. So... I've, I've learnt, I've expanded my repertoire of cooking, and I've moved from two meals to three meals now, but I can, <laughs> but I can cook, so we're, we're moving on. Um, if you've had any news in your family, you want to share it with us, send us an email. Keep, let's keep in touch with each other and find out, find out what we've been doing. So, happy Easter to you all today. Happy Easter. May we bow down our heads for the solemn blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. 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 And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have been drawn to a close, May you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalt in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth the masses and the
Let us see 